This is Texans TV. We look back at some of the top offensive plays from 2019 and see a whole new side of game day with the Houston Texans cheerleaders. Texans 360 begins now. This is Texans 360, and we're just so darn happy that you're watching. My name's Drew Doherty. We got my good pal Cecil Shorts the third with us. Played wide receiver in the NFL for the better part of a decade. You're here with the Texans. You're on the radio, Sports Radio 610. It's always good to see you here, man. We got a big show because we got to inspire change. We got to go beyond the boots, and we're getting set for the combine so he can share some stories with us. But Cecil, it was a fun 2019 regular season did not end the way we liked it but there were some great things that happened on offense a lot of great moments um Deshaun Watson comes to mind special <laughs> but the pieces that you added in the offseason when the offensive line and some of the skill positions um it's, you have a bright future here for the Texans yes and we're going to get into that bright future at length a little bit later but we start things off with some of the best offensive plays well, that we saw in September and October November December there were 10 of them, and there were more than 10, and we had to whittle it all down. These are some of the highlights from a 2019 that saw the Texans win 10 games. Watson gets the snap. There's pressure. Deshaun scrambles out to the right, throws right sideline, and hits DeAndre. They're going to say that he was out of bounds. Boy, you want to look at this toe drag because well, we've seen about him it. do it before. Here, Hopkins thinks he was in. Oh, they're going to call it a catch. I mean, you just kind of get in the vicinity, and this guy's going to make the play. And now Watson from his end zone, and he wants it all. And what an effort by Will Fuller. Up and over Eli Apple. Wow. Third down and five. Texans from the Houston 45. Watson with the gun. Duke Johnson to the backfield with him. Here's the snap to Deshaun. Looking. There's traffic. Watson escapes to the left now. Back to the right. Trying to buy time. Throws right sideline. Kneel down catch. Duke Johnson. First down. Houston Texans. And the magician with another creative first down for the Texans. Two minutes to play at Arrowhead, 31-24, the Texans lead, and it's fourth down and three at the Kansas City 27, and Bill O'Brien's gonna go for it. Here's the snap, Watson throwing, and he hits Hopkins for a first down! The game is over! The Texans can kill the clock in Kansas City! Excellent throw, what a call. Deshaun looking, Deshaun stepping to his left, and he throws long again to the end zone, and it's caught by Stills! Rock and roll! Watson to Kenny Stills for six! What a throw. What a throw. Deshaun Watson, three touchdown passes with the nation watching against the defending Super Bowl champions. Deshaun gets the snap, looking left. Watson dancing, and Watson throwing downfield, and he's got Fuller across the 15, 10, 5. Rock and roll! Touchdown to Will Fuller! And that seals the deal! First down at the Bills, 20 split backs. Watson in the gun. Deshaun calls for the ball. Keeper, right side, Watson, 15. Watson cutting inside, 10. The 5 still going down to the goal line. Rock and roll! Touchdown! Deshaun Watson on the run. Put the team on your back. When you have number four under center, you always feel like you got a chance. A little trickery here. Hopkins and more trickery to Watson. Touchdown. Oh, baby. Like a four by 100 relay. A lot of give and take here. Handoff, handoff, yep. option play out wide, perfectly executed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Watson looking, pocket collapsing. Watson trying to get away. He does to the right, throws to the end zone, caught by Fells. Magical touchdown, Houston, and the Texans take the lead. A magician. Looked like he might have gotten kicked. 
hit in the face when he broke out of that tackle. Here's a blitz, Watson in trouble. Watson escapes to the right side, and Watson throws it to Jones. Running inside 40, 35, 30, the 25, 20, 15, and down to the 10-yard line. What a play. The magician does it again. He took a shot from his blind side and spun right out of it. But the guy that Dabo Sweeney said was the closest thing he's seen to Michael Jordan. He put the S on his chest, and he got out and made an unbelievable throw. And if you like that video, there's much more stuff like that on HoustonTexans.com and the Houston Texans mobile app. All right, let's revisit the offense, and let's start where we were just kind of talking before with Deshaun Watson. He's been excellent in his entire career here, but he took a step forward this year, and it looks like the best is yet to come. Where did you see growth from from uh, D4 in 2019? I think just uh, the understanding of the offense. This is a complicated offense when it comes to how Bill O'Brien wants it to run. But you've seen him take charge this year, um, making calls at the line of scrimmage, and then getting the ball out quickly. And I think one thing that he does well is, is make plays, right? We saw that in the Buffalo game in the, in the playoffs. But he does a good job of commanding the offense, being the leader of that offense, um, and clutch moments always coming through. But for him, the more you play, the better he got. And that rookie year, the second year injuries, um, fighting through different stuff that goes on, and then this year kind of took off. And to me, honestly, he's a top five quarterback in the NFL. What can you say about the way he handled a team that saw new pieces on the offensive line get added the week before? He had two rookies in front of him blocking. He had Duke Johnson back there. He had Carlos Hyde. They weren't even a part of things until August, late yep. August, yep. And, and some of the stuff at the receiver. What did you think of the way he was able to move the offense, considering there was so much turnover and so late in the offseason? It shows his leadership ability and how he kept guys up to speed and how he took time after practice and before practice to communicate, hey, on this route I need you here, or on this run play, make sure you communicate with me. And you've seen in games, I mean, week one, Kenny Steele is a big play. Um, week one, Duke Johnson played well. Carlos Hyde were playing well throughout the whole entire year. So that's a credit to not only the, the, their position coaches, um, but really Deshaun being a leader and keep keeping everybody comfortable. Now you're the perfect guy to talk to about this because you joined the Texans in the offseason yes. uh, of 2015. You had to learn that new offense. How much better do you think this offense might be able to operate with the continuity, with an offseason under their belt? And they, have, yeah. they had, had a full season for guys like Tunsil, for guys like Stills, for guys like Johnson and Hyde. It's going to be huge, man. It's, it's, I felt my most comfortable with the offense the next offseason. Mm -hmm. So that following offseason, I'm like, I, I know what to expect. I know the reads. I know the hot reads, what the defense does, what was expected of me, where I'm supposed to be. So when you bring a core group of guys, a group of guys back from this past season, they're going to be in camp rolling. And for the most part, everybody's healthy. Yeah. So they can get together in the offseason and go to their fancy places and go throw and do stuff like that in shorts. When all that stuff matters, the timing, everything, and the more comfortable they get with each other, the better the product will be on the field. In your 2015 season, you, that was the first year that DeAndre Hopkins made the Pro Bowl. You saw great things from yeah. him then, I know. What have you seen from him growth-wise each successive year? I think as a, as a total package. So when I was here 2015, Andre Johnson just left. Right. And that was his first time being like the guy. So that was more of a timid, I'm not sure what to say at times. And he was still developing as a receiver. Well, now what you see is a total package receiver. He can run any route. He's going to catch 90% of the balls that come his way. Um, he can get open, and he's, he's not as afraid to speak up when needed to. So I think he does a great job of leading the younger receivers and bringing them along, and then speaking up in different situations where they need somebody to speak up. He does a good job. You know, that was his third season in the league, and that was the first season that he was the not the youngest guy in the room, and he was only by a, a few months because Jalen Strong was a rookie that Jay year. Lane. But that's, I mean, think about that. It, it took until his third year for him to be the youngest, not be the youngest guy in the room. That's pretty amazing stuff. All right, we've got a lot to get into, so stick with us because when we come back, we're going behind the scenes for what game day is like for a Houston Texans cheerleader. Stay tuned. We're back. This is Texans 360. We appreciate you watching. Drew Doherty and Cecil Shorts the third. You know, Cecil, the players, not the only ones uh, out on the field on game day. You see the Houston Texans cheerleaders. They do a great job, but Absolutely. a lot goes into that. So, we're going to continue things, our Beyond the Boots series, checking them out on game day and what happens.
There's nothing like a Texans game day. We work so hard, blood, sweat, and tears all week, long hours, just to have that moment on game day. That's what we live for. That's the reason we joined HTC. We have, we have big boy, check. We have Beyonce, yes. <laughs> For a normal noon game, the cheerleaders are arriving about 6.30 in the morning, trying to get them ready for the game. It's awesome to get here that early to do makeup, hair with our girls. We dance around, everyone is chit-chatting with each other. It honestly calms our nerves. When you walk in and your shows are going and your hair is bouncing and that tunnel wind hits you, you're just like, yes, this is, this is my moment. This is my time to shine. I mean, I can leave it. You can have a little curl right here. <laughs> Give me a little curl. They come in and they've got a little bit of time to work on hair and makeup and just kind of the calm before the storm. And so it's a gradual rise to the energy level. Once we hit sound check, it's dance full out, give me your facials, and we're just making sure there are any last minute kind of corrections and quirks that we need to work out and just make sure that we are game day ready. What's up? Hello. Perfect You're tired. Oh my gosh. First time here. Really? So appearances before the games are a great opportunity for us to meet the fans one on one and have a real conversation with them since we can't do that on the field. And to know that I get to be a role model to these girls, it's really fun to see their genuine joy. For pregame appearances, I make sure that there are new cheerleaders at every appearance every week. The fans get so excited to meet the cheerleaders. We've got about two hours of pregame appearances where we're out meeting fans and then it's game time. Dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing us together today. We ask that you watch over each and every person in the stadium, that you keep us strong, keep us safe, keep us healthy, and let's have a Texans win today. Amen. Amen. Every game, I feel the exact same way. Every time we're in the tunnel, it's just this wind of excitement and just butterflies in my stomach. The feeling never gets old. It is an excitement that stays for the entire game. That game day experience wouldn't be the same without our cheerleaders. They drive our home field advantage. When we get a touchdown, they get to celebrate on the sidelines. When the team needs more energy from the fans, it's the cheerleaders who make that happen and they drive that energy from the crowd. Whenever we're cheering on the team, it feels like the fans and the cheer team is engaged on one goal, one mission. We're all cheerleaders. We're all cheering for the Texans, for the team that we live for. I love when the cheerleaders hit that ending pose. You can see in their faces how proud they are of that performance. They're breathing hard from how much effort they put into it. They've got their teammates around them. You can just see the pride dripping off of them. Pressure's on, we're there to put on a show. And that's what we do, we practice all week long, really hard, long hours to go out there and nail it with that HTC sass. Watson gets behind, Nick Martin takes a knee and it is over. The Texans do the job on the Raiders. Texans 27, Raiders 24. A game day is a lifetime for the cheerleaders. They come early before the game so that we've got a lot of time to prepare. Post game, we have a team meeting to talk through the celebrations from the game and opportunities for improvement next time. We walk out together as a team and we feel relieved and happy that we all went out there and gave it our all. We gave it our best shot and we have our critiques that we're gonna take into the next week and it motivates us to be better and better because practice makes perfect and being able to know that we went out there and killed a routine but can always make things better, it pushes us and pushes us each and every practice. Bodies need rest, minds need rest, but I want y'all to know just how proud y'all make me on a daily basis. And we've all, me included, we've all grown so much this season and I'm proud of our progress and we're gonna just, we're gonna blow the roof off of NRG by the end of the season, so. Thank you.
Coming up, we're going back to 2011 and the combine. Cecil Shorts III was heading into the NFL. This is Texans 360. We're in the Arctic Studios. This is Texans 360, Drew and Cecil, and the Combine is in a week. So basically, a week from Monday, mm -hmm. everything gets going in Indianapolis, and you went through that in 2011. You were part of a great class, man. You had J.J. Watt, you had Cam Newton, you had A.J. Green, a lot of others, Tyron Smith. You belonged in that group. You were in the NFL for about six, seven, oh, eight very years. Kind of. Yeah, you got to, got to, come on, I'm pumping you up here. What was that like? You played your college ball at a small school. You weren't like that some of those guys that had been at the Wisconsin's, the USC's, the Ohio State's, and so on and so on. It's a mind-bending experience just to watch from my perspective. I can't imagine what it was like to go through, though. It was incredible. It was a surreal experience. It was at times I felt like, you know, wow, I'm, I'm really here. And I told you before on the podcast, you know, when you're a Division Three guy, you still root for other Division One programs. Mm -hmm. So I was a big Ohio State fan. I knew all those guys. So when you see, you know, the primetime games playing, and then when you see Cam Newton at the combine who's right next to you, it's kind of surreal for you. And you're like, okay, you gotta, I kind of had to check myself. Like, listen, you belong here. You're here for a reason. You're a good football player too. Let's go out there and, and enjoy yourself and have some fun. But it was, it was surreal. And it's a surreal experience also because every minute of your day is segmented and planned out and you're yeah. doing something you're, you're kind of tugged in a bunch of different directions aren't you yeah so you get this lanyard that they put around their necks and you have like a schedule for each and every day and you you have to be at somewhere let's say i have a meeting with the houston texans at 11 20 you got to make sure you're there on time because they're observing every single thing you do and teams talk as well yeah so what bit of advice do you have for some kids that are uh, that are going out there to the combat what's the best way to uh, to attack and to, to succeed at the combine if you go. I think just be yourself. Yeah. The same way you approach any game, uh, approach the combine setting that way. In the meetings, be yourself, have fun, laugh. Um, if you try to be somebody else, you're not, it's not gonna be well for you. Just go out there, let your hair down, um, or if you have no hair, brush your hair, and then <laughs> and just be yourself. Go out there, and it's a business, but at the same time, I wish I would enjoy that experience a little more. And talk to a few more guys that were trying to communicate with me. I was so uptight. I didn't get a chance to relax. Best part of the combine was, worst part of the combine was? Best part, all the free stuff you get. Okay, Adidas, so to Nike, stuff. Reebok, I mean, clothes, shoes, all types of stuff. Tough, huh? The worst part, having to do the drug test like at three in the morning. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting in line, and then it's a line, a line, a line. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then once you're up at three, you don't go back to sleep because you got to do whatever else you got to do. So the combine is kind of set up to put you through adversity to see how you deal with it. So these uh, middle of the night drug tests, they kind of set you up properly and prepared you well for fatherhood, I'm guessing. Oh, you, it was, you, you have know seven what? kids, you I know? do. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it was a good, uh, a good tool you moving forward. But this is a much happier, uh, much happier <laughs> bit. All right, we've got more on Texans 360, so stick with us because we're going to find out how the Texans got involved in the community and inspired change. Welcome back. This is Texans 360. Drew Doherty, Cecil Shorts III. You played for the Texans. One of the fun things that I imagine you got to do was uh, the Tuesday afternoons, the free days. Yeah. You were always out in the community doing stuff, weren't you? Yeah, and just the opportunity to give back to the community that supports you so much. And Houston does a great job of, of doing that on a consistent basis year-round. Yeah, it's a very important part of what the Houston Texans want to do. The main thing, they want to win championships, but they also want to make a very positive dent in the community. They want to inspire change. I serve as the Executive Director of Social Responsibility with the YMCA of Greater Houston. I'm with Restoring Justice. My name is Giovanni Arias. I'm the Executive Director. My name is Marvin Pierre. I'm the Executive Director of 8 Million Stories. Uh, most of our kids are referred to us either from the Juvenile Justice uh, probation department or through our um, local school districts. Our mission is to transform the lives of vulnerable youth between the ages of 14 and 18 through education, skills training, employment, and also social emotional support. We serve the men and women in Harris County Jail that are sitting there because they have inadequate defense. A lot of what we do is preventing our clients from lacking the resources to fulfill the potential that they have in their life. So the major issue that we're addressing really through all of our youth development programs are some gaps in opportunity. Specifically with our teen programs, we provide experiences and opportunities for them to 
uh, see parts of the world and see parts of community that they wouldn't otherwise have access to. We had Texans players and Texans staff take time out of their schedules and actually go to Alabama and visited some sites um, in the civil rights movement there. They were able to exchange and meaningful dialogue about what they learned and how those experiences impacted them. Our teens really felt heard and seen and it was a great exchange. Back to school drives, um, we did an amazing screening of Just Mercy where we brought students and families out. We had a van donated to our program and the organization, the Houston Texans, has really believed in a small organization that's trying to do some great work and address a huge problem. In the last three years, we served about 26 clients. After we were able to make the partnership with the Texans and their financial contribution, we actually doubled that amount. That financial commitment has really uh, catapults us to the next uh, phase of our organization. Uh, it has really also been a catalyst of new partnerships. It's the fact that we are already a community partner with the Houston Texans that allows us to further the work and further the serving of the masses of those who are being affected by the mass incarceration. The work that we're doing around the school to prison pipeline to really give new chances to our young people who have been written off, being able to um, let them know that people still do care about them and that they do have value and they do matter. Two years ago, we never thought we would be a partner of the Houston Texans. So for me, it's actually ignited me even more to really dream even bigger um, and see how far we can go even just with this experience this year. They have the tool of youth leadership, but now they have this platform with an organization like the Houston Texans where teens with the YMCA felt seen and felt heard, um, and most importantly, that they felt inspired to be the change for future generations. They're not just good football players, they're good people too. They're out and about doing great things. Check out HoustonTexans.com, the community page, to see what the latest thing the Texans have done in the community. Hey, this was awesome. I want you to come back and do it again in about a month or so. You cool with that? That's a month. That's after the combine, after before the, the draft. Combine. That's a good time. Yeah, and then good we time. can do one after the We'll, we'll, we'll keep like bringing it. you back in I like and it. have you uh, sharing your wisdom with us. Sound good? I appreciate it. Cecil Shorts, thank you again for coming on. Thank you for watching, and we appreciate the guys behind the camera helping the show be what it is, like Tyler Sudarth, Joe Pallas, Tyler Marcotte, and Mitchell Moreland and the rest. So until then, we will see you again next time on Texans 360. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.